Which major sport wins the next championship? Uh, I've got football, men's basketball, women's basketball, baseball again. That is on the YouTube page. Take part in that right now. Let's get it up. I want your vote. Football says 73% of our listeners slash viewers. Men's basketball, 9%. Baseball, again, 25%. Women's basketball, 0%. How much is football wishful thinking, Caleb? How can I call them wishful thinking when I think football is – I've been high on football winning it this year since we started the show together, Dave, two years ago. I've been seeing 2024 is Tennessee's year, have I not? And yeah. So it wouldn't be yeah. a surprise to you. So let's change gears a little bit then. Well, okay, sorry. Or go ahead, go ahead, continue. I was going to say, if you wanted to bet, the most obvious bet would probably be baseball again, um, or men's basketball. Heck, even I don't know if you consider it a major sport, but softball. Tennessee's a top five program consistently in softball, and they could win it all in that. So um, it's not deemed a major sport, but it would get a lot of pub. Yeah. So I think any of those three, Tennessee would be a probably more likely bet according to Vegas than football. So if, if, if Vegas were setting these odds, they would have baseball number one, because I think Tennessee is going to be the favorite to win it all next year in baseball. They would have men's basketball number two. I'm sorry. No, they'd have softball number two. They'd have softball number two. They'd have men's basketball number three. They'd have football number four, and they'd have women's basketball number five. And the reason is women's basketball is not going to be able to compete probably for a couple of years, at least. Agreed. Um, football, I think, is an incredibly well-run program, but the competition, especially with having a Kirby Smart just down the road, is really difficult. It's tough for me to go with Rick Barnes. I'm – Okay, women's basketball to me is out. Baseball is the correct answer. But let's take a second and compare basketball and football. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, but basketball and football. Football is incredibly tough. Basketball is incredibly tough because, no offense to Rick Barnes, but you have a guy that has not shown he can get to the Final Four consistently. So even if you said Rick Barnes, Tennessee basketball makes the final four and count that as a championship. Okay. That's our qualifier on this. I still might take football to win a national championship before I would take Rick Barnes to make a final four at Tennessee. Is that crazy? No, it's not crazy, but it's funny how me and you have 180 from over a year ago because I, said, and you you said this past year's Tennessee team was different just because of Dalton Connect. I said that's actually reflective more of Rick Barnes' changing philosophy. He's the only guy I know that changed his philosophy at age 69. And I said the change in philosophy is going to make it more conducive for Tennessee to go far in the NCAA tournament. Okay, Whereas but it- let me stop you for a second to make sure that those that don't listen get, get to listen every single day. Hit the like and subscribe button. Tell me what the change in philosophy is. I know, but just tell everybody. Rick Barnes, he always ran tempo. That's fine. But he was much more willing to play small ball and use four and use floor spacing and rely less on the mid-range game for scoring. And he made it a point to make sure Tennessee had a minimum number of shooters out there at any given time. So if they were in an offensive drought, they could – someone was bound to shoot him out of the slump. And he made sure he had a go-to scorer who, if everything broke down, that guy could get him out of a slump. That was not a Rick Barnes philosophy. Rick Barnes' philosophy for the longest time – was somewhat the flex offense with a tie in with the motion offense where, you know, you just look for the best shot, um, turn up the tempo on defense and really grind your players defensively. And even if that wears you out offensively and it, it, it would prove costly in tournament time because there wouldn't be enough shooters to go around or to, if Tennessee was in a drought to get them out of it. So this past year he switched to a high, low motion offense made Dalton Connect his go-to guy, and the big one, he took the foot off the gas in March. I mean, Rick Barnes, literally, y'all are going to call me crazy on this. Tennessee made it to the Elite Eight after Rick Barnes. I keep saying it purposely through the SEC tournament. Straight up through it. Well, I don't think anybody's arguing with you at this point. Um, Which I said he should do when he listened to me. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that's exactly what he did. Uh, Here's my question. 
if it takes a Dalton connect for you to change your approach, then are you really that close to a championship if you're changing your approach? I give him credit for changing it. Don't get me wrong. Okay. But I look at Tennessee's football team and they're going out and get players that fit their approach. And their approach is very good. Whereas Rick Barnes, I think it's funny how people say, you know what some team in the SEC should do? They should just start running the wing T. Theoretically, something like that could work, right? If you had to face the wishbone or something goofy, a flex bone, whatever, if you had to face that every week, it theoretically would work, right, Caleb? Right. Okay, but the coaches don't know how to coach it. Just like you can't go to Barry Switzer right now and say coach Josh Heupel's offense. I mean, you, it's two different offenses. I mean, you got to know how to coach it. You Barry don't Switzer just, didn't even have to coach his Super Bowl team. So that's <laughs> not like I just say, I like Hawaiian shirts. So I'm going to go out and get a shirt like Caleb's. No, it's much more. <laughs> you got to actually look good in it like I do. You look fantastic. So to say that you give a lot of credit to Rick Barnes for changing his system, but I give a lot of credit to Josh Heupel for having a system, having a system that wants to pull in prospects and getting the right system to fit in there. I'd rather get a Nico that's a perfect fit than a Dalton and have to change everything because they're going to have to change everything again this year. They're not going to have an ISO player like Dalton. No, so to answer the no question, you are totally wrong on that. To answer the question, no, I, I, I know they've got a, a stretch four now, and I think they're going to do things different, but I don't think they have a one-on-one -on -one player from people I've talked to that can ISO, that can do that Auburn game like Dalton did. So I'm going to answer the question like this. I'm going to say that baseball is the obvious one. They're most likely to win another championship like next year. Okay. Next, I'm going to go football because I just don't believe in Rick Barnes. I've seen a lot of Rick Barnes not winning the championship. I've seen a lot recently of Josh Heupel preparing a team to win a championship. So I'll take the potential over the history. And lastly, there's really no argument. The Lady Balls, they're rebuilding that program. Hit like and subscribe. Caleb. Okay, so again, I'm go you're forcing me into a corner because I am going football too because I think football's winning it this year because it's not just Josh Heupel's system. You would it go base. A, you would go baseball, well, right? Baseball, baseball, okay. but yes, football after that. It's not just Josh Heupel's system. It's the quarterback built in a lab to run the system. I keep telling you guys, this is Tim Tebow landing in Urban Meyer's lap. All right, so that's where I met with this. Rick Wait Barzo, a second. Neither one of those guys landed in labs. I mean, there was a. Tim Tebow, Tim Tebow fell out of it. Urban Meyer took the Florida job when it just so happened that the best quarterback ever to run his system was coming out of high school in Florida. Do you know how lucky that oh, is? Mm, yeah, well, it's lucky, but he didn't fall in his lap. I mean, Alabama made a hard push. I give Urban Meyer credit for, for that recruitment because I thought he was going to go to Alabama somewhat late before he Dave, but let's be honest. The minute Tim Tebow saw that offense... Tim Tebow would not have worked at Alabama with Mike Shula. That, uh, he would have ran a standard under center pro style offense, and he probably would have been a bust in college had that happened, right? It was the spread offense that he needed to run. Yeah. Yeah. Literally so that. I think the minute Urban, that's the thing. Urban Meyer went to Florida that while the best quarterback possible ever to run the spread offense was coming out of high school and was in Florida. So it was just, it was, it, that was luck a little bit. Josh Heupel got Nico Iamaliava, and I think that's why I got him winning it this year. But to defend Rick Barnes, see, you think it, you think Rick Barnes changed his style after Dalton Connect. I think it's the opposite. I think Rick Barnes changed his approach, which oh. is why he landed Dalton Connect. And I look at the way he's been going after um, players this year. He's gone for the stretch four. He's gone to spread off the court. He's gone for multiple shooters, and he's looking to see if one of them can end up being the ISO player. Because mm, you. Not we're talking Darling Stone Dubar, who is basically the same profile of a player as Dalton Connect. Um, Igor Milicic isn't going to be an ISO player. He's a stretch four. But Darling Stone Dubar or Chaz Lanier could end up being an ISO player. I mean, Chaz Lanier was highly touted across the country with the way he developed at the end of last year. And so I don't see why where you and I differ, I don't think those two guys are on Dalton's level. I think that's a once a decade top player. And that's where I, you're right. That is where I and do if, differ. I think. And if I'm wrong, think, then then you got to, then Tennessee has a great shot of making another lead eight or beyond. But, but would you try, even if I'm wrong, would you trust Rick Barnes to take him to the final four or beyond? 
yes, with this philosophy that he has now, yes. I think Dalton Connect is going to turn out to be um, – Dalton Connect is Shane Matthews. Everybody thought Shane Matthews was great when he played for Steve Spurrier. Then everybody realized, oh, every quarterback does this under Steve Spurrier. You're about to see he's, that with Rick Barnes' system. He's just – well, Shane. 